In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. I see people fighting. I see fires breaking out, violence, people killing each other. But the terror, the absolute terror I seen and heard was frightening. And I woke up feeling desperate, like, Lord, you are coming soon. That's what I was saying a lot, you know. I couldn't stop saying, Jesus, you are coming. Jesus, you are coming. Jesus, you are coming. The Lord spoke to me and he said to me, the flight, the rapture, the rapture of the saints. <laughs> that was when I understood the meaning of the dream. Hi, I'm Gary Greenlee. During the last few years, a phenomenon is taking place where people all over the world are having rapture dreams at an increasing rate. These are just some of them. I wanted to bring to you what I believe God has given me. I was very, very hesitant to do this, um, especially when it comes to dreams or people's visions. Um, I've always been taught to keep them close like pearls, but I couldn't hold this back because I've had this dream essentially three times over the past kind of 10 days. Hi guys, I want to make this video to share with you um, what the Lord showed me and what the Lord told me in a dream last night. I shared it with like four or five people that were in my church um, and I never made it public but I, I really think that now is the time to to bring this up to make this dream public and I think it's time you know so I asked the Lord in my prayer God if you are coming soon like really soon Lord as these people are saying and as you said the thousand years ago God gave me something gave me a dream or something or a vision and um, but last night, guys, the Lord gave me a rapture dream. In the dream, I was on a cruise ship. Um, and I know I was there with my wife. Um, and I couldn't really focus on, on too many other people there. I couldn't recognize too much. But next of all, I felt like the cruise was shaking. Like I was standing on the ground, but it was moving. But when this happened, it was almost like I heard something under the cruise, but deeper down, it was almost like metal or stone crunching and breaking. Now, as it happened, I wasn't, I wasn't sure what was happening, but I remember the first thing that I thought I would do was run up to the top deck, was to get away. But when I got to the top deck, I remember I could hear people all panicking and nervous because they didn't know what was happening. And then I heard like a crashing thunder and it was so loud, it shook my body. Now, considering my ears are not great, um, I'd be slightly deaf uh, in one ear. But I could hear this and it, and it vibrated through my bones. It went right through my body. So in the dream, um, it, we were, it was thousands of people in a huge warehouse, like an industrial warehouse, you know? Um, and I was within a group of believers and we were like in a sector of people that believed in God, but out within the same building, but like separated from us were uh, everybody, you know, just partying, like drinking, you know, pretty much just partying. And, and then out of nowhere, um, this huge beam of light just like shines through and the, the warehouse didn't have a roof for whatever reason. This huge beam of light just shines through from the sky into the floor of the warehouse. And as we see this, and the, the clouds start like giving way to the light, we, you know, with all the believers, we all start looking at each other and we're like, 
we started rejoicing because we knew exactly what this was. We're all we're all just like laughing, like you know, he's coming, he's coming. You know, you can just imagine like everybody just let's go, you know. And the Lord spoke to me, and He said this: "My children, the time is here. Um, I am next to the door." It was like we knew. That the, that the rapture is going to take place like we knew that the Lord is coming we knew that the rapture was here and there was desperation in the world to preach there was desperation to preach the gospel and then the boat started to go really mad it started to kind of torn shake things were falling all over the place and well, there must have been a leak because it's, I started to feel cold on my feet and I looked down and I could see the water was moving up now normally in dreams I don't really feel a lot, whether it be wind or cold, I don't normally get a, I don't really get a lot of dreams. And I started to feel everything move. Now when I was looking, I remember I'm on the top deck and when I looked, I was looking, I was looking to the coast. And when I looked, I heard the cracking again. It was almost like something was snapping. And when I looked again, I could, I could hear people screaming, but it was like the land had shifted upwards and the water was kind of was kind of receding into the water. It's like something you would see out of some movies. But, this, the, but the, what I could remember most is, was the noise and the screaming I could hear was deafening. I could hear so many people screaming for help, knowing that destruction had hit them, the loss of hope like they're on their own, seeing the water coming at them, everything. Jesus Christ starts coming. He comes from within that light and then he, um, he like comes out of it. So you're able to see him because the light was very blinding. It was so, it was such a pure light that it was like, you could really look directly at it um, until he came out of that light and you could see him and everybody saw him, everybody, not just us, the believers, but also everybody else that was in the warehouse. I just remember start that I started to be lifted. I started. To, he started to take his people, and I'm looking around and I'm seeing everybody. Not everybody, but I'm seeing a lot of people, right? Like the people that I knew, some that I didn't. I'm um, just being lifted. He was started to take us, and I remember I was being lifted. I was going up, levitating, and, and just like feeling like I made it. You know, it was all worth it. This whole life and this whole fight, the good fight, was worth it. And at that moment, as I'm being lifted, I I look down. And I see a woman in tears on her knees crying. I see people fighting. I see fires breaking out, violence, people killing each other. It was just chaos. And then I could see the war from the boat was starting to shift away. Could have been from a tsunami, I don't know. I didn't see anything like that uh, when it came to the water side. I just seen that it had moved or receded away. And in that moment, I remember fear started to grip me. And I was panicking thinking, you know, where is everyone? Then I could see my family, some of my other immediate family members on lifeboats kind of moving away and I saying that they were safe. But the terror, the absolute terror I seen and heard was frightening. And then it got worse because as this land was starting to move and the cracks, it could have been an earthquake sound, I don't know. I could see fires billowing up all over the place and people screaming, the, the, the deafness of the, the noise of people screaming run through my body and shook me. It shook me from head to toe. And I remember at that moment, as I was being lifted, I see a woman watching her child being taken, but she was left behind and she was in tears crying out. And instead of feeling joyful that I was, that the Lord was taking me, I, it broke my heart. Um, and I don't even know if that's the right feeling that I should have had because I knew that I was, you know, being that God, I was with God, but at the same time, it just broke me to be able to see that, that God allowed me to see that. And I don't know if she was crying, you know, that, that he was taken in the, in the first place, but I, I believe that she was crying because she wasn't taken. And so many other people were crying in the same way. Some people were repenting. Some people were breaking out in violence, killing each other. It was, it was a chaos, man. The next thing the Lord showed me was me and the, and the group of people from the church, of young people, of some of my friends. And um, we were like getting ready. It's like 
the Lord was trying to tell to show me that we were like getting ready to to be lifted up to go with the Lord and um, there was this girl with us she was about, she was a young girl about nine years old and she couldn't come with us she was not part of the church um, and we were like there was frustration we were like sad because we didn't know how to tell her that she cannot come with us that we had to leave her here she was left behind and I remember crying out to God, thinking, what is happening? What is going on? And in that moment, I heard what sounded like, I can only describe it, a foghorn on a boat. That's the only way I can explain this. Then I seen what was what I thought to be the meteor. A massive stone, size, I don't know, huge. Everything that was in the sea was dead. Everything was dead. But in that moment, then I heard it what well, sounded like the fog horn again. And bang, I was out of the dream. It was that quick and that simple. It was like I woke up and I was like living the dream. I was like living in there and I was terrified. I was scared. And I woke up feeling desperate. Like, Lord, you are coming soon. That's what I was saying a lot. You know, I couldn't stop saying, Jesus, you are coming. Jesus, you are coming. Jesus, you are coming. There was no more time to share the gospel. Um, the, and the Lord just was taking the church up in the sky and those words that the Lord that the Lord spoke to me guys he said this clearly he said that my children the time is here I am next to the door and then he showed me this different stuff before you know before we even made it into heaven or anything I woke up and the last image that I had in my head was of a woman crying over her child that her child was being taken but she was left behind I sat here a bit, but I couldn't sit. So I went to Zina's room because the revelation was, she was part and parcel of this revelation and my children and my family. She was sleeping and I woke her up. I said, Zina, I want to share something. I had a bad dream and I want to tell you what it is. I sat down and she, she sat up listening. And I said to her, in this revelation, we went to Nigeria. And I have my tickets, six tickets for us, all of us. And then we were waiting for the flight to be ready for departure. The flight was due to carry not a lot of people, but then the queue of people that would enter the same little tiny wide flight baffled me. The queue was so long. So when we got to the, the, the queue, they said to us, we need another ticket, a boarding pass. I said, but I have it. I said, no, there's a little ticket we need to get in. So I quickly went to the dashboard. I spoke to this gentleman. He gave me all the boarding passes and we went in. But when we got in, by the time I got the boarding pass, I got in, the flight was nearly full, but we still had our places in front. But then we all entered the boys, my husband, but then there's no space for Zina. I said, let's share. So they're like, there's, no, you're not going to share with her. Uh, she has to get down. I said, no, my daughter can't get down from this flight. No, she's ready. She has a ticket. She has the right to board. She can't get down. They closed the, the flight, the plane, and then they started to move. I said, no, 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 my daughter is down, my daughter is down. I can't leave without her. So I was like, no, no, no. I started to cry. I started, no, leave, wait, wait. My daughter is still down. The guy left, the pilot moved. So I was crying. I said, no, my daughter is there. I can't leave my daughter, I can't leave my daughter. By the time we got to where we were going, my daughter was not in the flight. And then, I'm sorry, I'm crying. My daughter was not in the flight. So I was like, no. I said to my husband, she has the boarding pass. We have the right ticket. Why is she not here? I mean, she doesn't have a phone. She doesn't have money. 
and we left her in Nigeria. It's dangerous out there. The world is wicked. The world is dangerous. I I'm sorry. As a young child, I can't leave her there. So I was like, no, I have to go back. So I said to my husband, I said, keep the boy safe. I'm coming. I'm going back for my daughter. I'm going back. And then the scriptures kept coming in as this experience was unfolding. Let him, he that is on the rooftop, stay. Oh God, I said, no, I'm going back. I can't leave my daughter there. It's dangerous. No. So I, God, I just started to pray, God, please, I need to go get my daughter. I need to go get my daughter. My daughter cannot be left in that zoo, in that place. It's dangerous. Then I started to pray, God, please, give us one more chance. Let me go get my daughter, please. I was crying. I said, please, Lord, please. And then within a twinkle of an eye, I saw myself in a flash. And then from where I was, I saw myself in the airport where my daughter was. So I started looking for her. And then I saw her sat on the wall outside. And then I saw the boys congregating, the bad guys hanging around, some things going on. And I said, Zina, she saw me and she ran. <sighs> She saw me and she ran, she hugged me. Mommy, thank you for coming back. She said, thank you for coming back. I said, okay, that's fine. I came back for you. The Lord would not allow me to go without you. So I went back into the terminal and I got, I said, I have a ticket. The previous one, but I had to come back for my daughter. So I need, I need a return back so I can join my husband and my family. So at least I have Z, I have Z with me, I have my daughter. So we, I got the ticket, I got the boarding pass, and we were waiting for the flight. And I woke up. <laughs> when I started sharing this experience with her, I said to her, this dream can mean three things. Three things. I'm not sure, I'm not exactly sure, but as I'm speaking, I can see three things out of it. So I told her the first one about the family. I told her the second one about herself. And then it was on the third one that the Lord spoke to me. And he said to me, the flight, the rapture, the rapture of the saints. <laughs> That was when I understood the meaning of the dream. When I was sharing this experience with Zina in her room, the Lord said to me, the end is nigh. The taking away of the sense is nigh. The enemy is trying everything to confuse people. You have the ticket. But if you are not careful, you're going to be wooed out. And any time he shows me anything regarding my family, I don't joke about it. It might be for everybody, but he just uses something dear to me to make me take it serious. I started to cry. She, she was shocked. And then she, I could see, see a bit of um, tears coming down her eyes. And I said to her, Zina, I think the Lord is telling us something. And exactly from my 16 to 17 years i gave my life to christ and i think this is the time the lord is telling me to lead you to him it's about time you get to know god yourself so i said to her what am i about to do i do it as i'm led are you happy for me to lead you to christ she said yes mommy <laughs> I was overwhelmed that the Lord answered my prayer because I asked him, Lord, if you are really coming soon, as everyone around is saying, and as, as the signs are happening, God, and I asked him to show me, God, are you coming soon, God? God, give me something. He gave me this dream. There is no more time left. We need to share the gospel, and we need to get right with God to keep his word because the Lord is coming soon, guys. Um, I'm not the type of person to come out and say I dream every day and have all types of these prophetic dreams and whatnot. For me personally speaking with these dreams, they're more of a wake up call and a warning. That's what I felt God was, was telling me. 
Now is the time that you seek God while he may be found in order to do the things that he wants us to do. And the main thing is, if we look at it even at the boat, was the lifeboats getting people saved, reaching them with the gospel and the power of the gospel. Obviously, I'm not the only one. There's a lot of people um, sharing these kinds of dreams. And I just think that now that it's, it's the time now, guys, if anything, more than ever, that you really seek God with all your heart. I'm going to read some scripture right now. Romans 10.13 says that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Jeremiah 29.13 says that those who seek him with all your heart will find him. And Job 35 says that God will not listen to an empty cry. So you have to seek him with all your heart. You have to seek him with all your heart. Call on to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I just need to share this with you. I feel like the Lord gave me this dream, but I need to share this with you because the Lord is coming soon and we need to get right with him. We think that the Lord is delaying his coming, but you never know because he said it as he's going to come like a thief. I don't I can't even express how I felt and what I saw and how it is but one thing I know is that we don't have much time the coming of our Lord Jesus the flight is about to take place is about to go and we want every one of us to make it I want every I pray that everybody every one of us will make it to the kingdom because that's our eternal goal that's our life's goal all these things we are doing here we're doing it so we can make it to that place of peace and rest guys just remember it's not here to f if for, as fear mongering it's scary it's not we have a blessed hope we as believers should have a hope in christ as i believe that we will be taken away as christians away from uh, the tribulation i really truly in my heart believe that but i'm also mentally prepared that we go through it, that I'm ready to do what it needs to be done in the tribulation period as well. And that's what I felt God was speaking to me. Many of us may start, you know, allow our flesh desires, allow seed in our life because we think, oh, we have time to repent. But the Lord says, if you, if you love me, you're going to keep my words. And then in Revelation 22, 12, Jesus said, Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me. I will give each person according to what I have done. Guys, I, I, I just know how, how difficult sometimes it is to share the gospel because I, I just am afraid at times. I care too much about what people might think of me. That people might think I'm weird. But no matter what they think of us, this is what the Lord wants us to do. The Lord wants us to share the gospel and to keep his word. And I believe it in my heart that the Lord is speaking to us as his body, as his bride, as a church. Seek God whilst he may be found. Seek God whilst he may be found. The time is drawing near. Once, I once it came to my remembrance, the flight. You don't know when it's going to happen. We had the ticket, we had the boarding pass, but something happened and one was dropped. Remember what Jesus said, two women will be in the field, one will be taken, the other left. Not my children, not my daughter, not my family. I believe the Lord is preparing the church for the flight. If you are still in sin, it's about time you make your way straight, straighten every crookedness. Because the hour cometh when grace will no longer abound. Regardless what happens or what's going to happen, God is in full control, always. The point of this and the point of these videos is to prepare ourselves and get ourselves ready so that we may do what God has called us to do in these days. Because we know what that is, we know what the mandate is, and it's to reach the lost. It's something I've discussed before, I hear from my mother all the time. She's always looking for opportunity to be able to share and reach the people. Plant that seed of the gospel, the power of the gospel to let it do its work. Guys, I just encourage you to seek him with all your heart. Call on to the name of the Lord with everything, with all of your soul and your spirit, and you will find him. We gotta be slaves to righteousness, okay?
The Lord is coming soon, guys. Take care. God bless you. Um, but till next time, keep the faith, and God is always in control. Guys, have a, have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching the video. And I really hope that this encourages you to continue to seek the Lord. And I know and I pray that you will make it in Jesus' name. God bless you and have a productive day. When I was talking, this massive, really loud trumpet covered the whole sky. And it was so loud, and we were all so scared, we sat down on the ground and we held hands. And I knew that it was time and I was gonna be taken and my parents were gonna be left. It was just like I saw a figure of a man. And, and now I just started saying, oh my God, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. And I just billowing and then they parted. And then I saw like a Jesus like figure in the clouds and then I started lifting up. I started to lift up. It's like gravity was shut off. And all of a sudden I looked at my feet and my feet were literally floating up. And I was like, and this trumpet was so loud. Like, like, it was so loud. Like literally everyone in the world heard it. You could not miss it. As I was standing there, I heard a loud sound of a trumpet. And it, and it blew for, for, for quite a while. But this one was like very, very low, like a, like a blow horn, like. So I'm sitting there and I hear this noise in the sky and, it, and it's literally like a trumpet and it's so loud. feel like God is speaking to you right now? The Bible says, seek the Lord while he can be found. Call on him while he is near. God is desperately, desperately wanting a relationship with you. And the good news is that Jesus came to give you the opportunity to have that relationship. If you would like to know God, please pray with me. Dear God, I know that I am a sinner in need of your grace. I repent of my sin and I ask you to please forgive me and come into my heart and be Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, we would love to talk with you. You can call us at 727-535-PRAY or visit us online at ctnonline.com forward slash prayer. If God has spoken to you today, share the good news and remember to keep watch because we don't know the day of our Lord's return.